in their Mountain West Conference title game in Vegas last week. Away we go inside the Pete Maravich Center. UNLV in the black uniforms. Michigan in the white. The 6-11 battle. And the Greenville Regional. So there is the catalyst for UNLV. Desi Ray Young. She gets a post touch immediately on the opening possession. Layla Filia with the rebound coming back the other way. Filia's layup is off the mark. A wild attempt that time. This is Michigan's starting five, brought to you by Capital One. You see the three prolific scorers. Filia back in the starting lineup had come off the bench the last two in the Big Ten tournament. Young, another look, couldn't get the put back to go home, and now a second offensive rebound, the latest for Alyssa Brown. Oh, Michigan with a size advantage, yet UNLV hitting the offensive boards here early. Uh, again! So a third look, Young. Boy, that would have been a dramatic shot underneath. Oh, nice job by Williams to keep her body on her, not give her any space. But and you see the size and talent inside that UNLV has. And UNLV wants to go in there immediately. You just saw the Lady Rebels Starting five as well, brought to you by Capital One. Three in the air for Emily Kaiser, and she knocks it down. Yeah, 33 in white. She is a fifth-year senior. Emily Kaiser, one of the hardest-working players in the nation. She's a great story and definitely can knock down those outside shots as well as play inside. She's taking a big leap forward. Michigan, very efficient offense. So is UNLV. Nice baseline cut for Justice Etheridge. Moving without the basketball that time. Well, and you can see UNLV is very confident coming out here. You, you would think they maybe have some jitters. So this is their second straight trip to March Madness. Last year they came as well, but very calm team. A, reflect, a reflection of their coach. What did Lindy LaRock say? She said, winning is a skill. We've won 22 in a row. We know how to win games, especially close ones. That's an offensive foul. It's the first on Cameron Williams with the illegal screen. We mentioned Lindy. So this is the head coach in the UNLV locker room pregame. Let's take a listen. All right, from your eyes, see it. From the get-go, being aggressive. Aggressive, what does that look like for you? Attacking the basket, being strong, ripping it low, rebound, getting the and one. Don't expect, like, this is a tournament game, big girl basketball. And one mentality, defensively. All right, we want to apply pressure to them. We're pressuring on the wing. You're not letting them duck in in front of you. You're covering for each other. You are in the gaps, in the gaps, in the gaps, in the gaps. And they have been playing big girl basketball. It looks almost like they're asleep in the locker room in pregame. But Coach specifically said, close your eyes and envision right. this. This is a team in UNLV and the Lady Rebels that comes out with confidence. They, they play very well together. They are not intimidated by anybody. And they visualize the win before they even get it. Hey, listen, the power of visualization. I get it. This is Etheridge, who's got a pair of baskets for the Lady Rebels. A brown leaves that three short. Both teams very confident. You would think a lot of that generated from what they do offensively, Andrea. This is Kaiser again. Close range this time. Lost it on the way up. Alyssa Durazo Frescas leading the break. No numbers. Now these two teams have two of the best field goal percentages in the country. Their offensive efficiency numbers are excellent. Plus the foul. Essence Booker takes the contact and is headed to the free throw line. Yeah, it's just great motion and movement on offense. Pressure defensively in the passing lane. Booker goes back door and is able to finish. Essence Booker has been a tremendous gift, really, to the, run or the Lady Rebels in the last two season seasons. She has originally went uh, to Nevada, Reno, went over after two years to Ball State, and then returned uh, to her hometown and decided to play for UNLV. And she has just been a terrific uh, pickup, running the point guard for them. And so the Lady Rebels have now made three of their last four after all those misses on the opening couple of possessions, all the offensive boards as well. Two-point lead for a team that's won 31 games, one of three in the tournament field to win 30 or more. Kaiser turns, scoops it up with the left. And there's a foul underneath. That may be on Young. 
trying to box out Williams that time. Yeah, a big part of Michigan's game is, hey, let's get the ball inside, whether it's to Kaiser, number 33, or Williams, 44. They are guarded one-on-one -on -one right now. Terrific job of taking a shot, trying to hit the boards. This is Maddie Nolan, yes. Yeah. Michigan worked a lot on their out-of-bounds plays yesterday. They execute them so well. Nolan, capable shooter, can knock that down. Booker, 4-3, left it short. Here's Leah Brown, 18 points a game. That's tops on the team. Miss fires from 15. Here comes Terrazzo Frescas. Etheridge in the corner, no. One of the things that stood out in the pregame for UNLV was just how much LaRock talked about the, their players having to be tough. And they've shown some toughness, like on that last rebound right there uh, for Drazo Fresca. They have shown they are not afraid to go get it on the glass on either side. Both teams do a wonderful job on the glass. Young took some steps. That's turnover. Great start to this one, which should be a pretty entertaining 6-11 battle. It's seven up, five minutes in. There's the 33-year-old from Las Vegas, Lindy LaRock, in her third season at UNLV. Guided this program to a 31-win season. Andrea, one of just four in Division I to win at least 30 games this year. Yeah, that is rare air right there. So South Carolina undefeated up until now. Florida Gulf Coast, an established team. All of these, are, at least Florida Gulf Coast, South Carolina, are established coaches, have been there a long, long time. Yeah. LaRock in just her third season, two times she's been to the big dance. And they have rolled through the Mountain West Conference now in consecutive seasons. Let's see how Michigan adjusts to the zone defense. Kaiser floated it up. There's a foul. That's going to keep things here. That's another whistle on UNLV. Now, one of the things LaRock is really good at is she makes a huge adjustments for her team. So she talks a lot about five-minute periods or four-minute increments. And after timeouts, like a break in a, in a quarter, she'll come out and change things up, especially in the first quarter defensively like she did right now. Yeah, a little zone look from yep. UNLV. Yep. Brown to the basket with the right hand. Yeah, absolutely. Terrific cut by Brown. And Brown is a wing turn point guard, so she's capable from that wing position of slicing to the basket. So that's Brown's first bucket. Again, she goes for 18 a game. That leads all scores. One of the most prolific playmakers in the Big Ten. Meanwhile, on this end, Etheridge has hit a couple of baskets early. Lost the handle, and so Michigan is coming back the other way. Brown, okay, right to the rim. Yeah, straight line drives twice in a row for Leah Brown. Good to see her on the floor. She's been battling nagging injuries with her ankle. They say she's at 100%. They say the team's at 100%. Felia also missed seven games in February with a lower leg injury. That's another giveaway, so Michigan gets it back. Michigan has stepped up their defense after that break in the first quarter, and I think they've created some opportunities. Brown has done a nice job of getting to the hoop against the zone and also in transition. Something you don't want to let Michigan do is score in transition very often. Well, and especially for a veteran player as well. Brown, the fifth-year senior from Indiana, transferred in a few years ago from Nebraska. He's been a wonderful playmaker. Nolan hit her first jumper offline that time. Yeah, good rebound right there by Williams, 6-3. <clears throat> She's got the ability to really bang in the, in the paint. Booker back to Brown on the baseline. That one's deflected out by Brown, so it stays here. UNLV looking for a shot attempt. They've given it away three times in a row. Well, and Michigan had... Uh, gave UNLV five points off of their two turnovers in the first five minutes of the game, and they look like they've really changed their defensive philosophy with a trap here. Yeah, a lot of pressure. This is Kiara Jackson into the game for the first time. Durazo Fresca, she is the shooter. Can't hit that Ooh. from beyond the arc. And then a foul underneath. Did you see Felia get up right there? What a tremendous athlete she is. Just a sophomore, six feet tall. Got some hops, shows her hops right there. 
Yeah, she draws the second foul on Alyssa Brown. So that's two on the sophomore forward. She takes a seat. And remember, the NCAA Women's Championship continues all day today. First round games, it continues through Sunday, April 2nd. There it is, the Final Four in Dallas with the championship culminating on Sunday, April 2nd. All games on the ESPN family of networks. And for more info, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 championships. Brown connects again. She's got six. Yeah, Jackson coming off the bench for UNLV, guarding Brown a little bit of a quickness advantage, but you can see how good she is with that mid-range jumper. She's had 30 points twice this year yes. as a point guard and 20 multiple times. Oh, and Michigan is now on an 8-0 run, so it's ahead by six. Coming up on the two-minute mark in the first quarter. Yeah, Michigan really extending, pressuring UNLV. Young gets a touch inside. No. So she's still looking for her first bucket. Ball back to the Wolverines. Well, Kaiser, I think, is used to guarding someone like Young. Nas Hillman, she had to guard probably for a couple of years when she was uh, during practice at Michigan. Hillman going on, and she was drafted last season. But a similarity between certainly Young for UNLV and Nas Hillman last year. And so even with Hillman moving to the WNBA right at the end of last year, here is Michigan, another fine season. They win 22 games, top five finish in the Big Ten, back to their fifth straight women's championship. That's a record. It's becoming business as usual around Ann Arbor. Booker, nice move behind the back from the free throw line, got it. Yeah, they needed that basket right there. Almost three and a half minutes without scoring UNLV had gone, and Booker's the one that can do that. She is relentless when she gets going. Kaiser had it stripped, ball back to the Lady Rebels. Yeah, terrific job defensively, those quick hands right there. Also, Booker making a play. So now can UNLV crack the code on this and how is Michigan pressuring this team on this side of the well, floor? Well, they're doubled. Every time there's a screen on the ball, they're trapping or when they have an opportunity that, to trap the ball, they are. It's a good job using a different kind of offense right here, getting away from the screen and roll. Pops all over Booker, so into Durazo <laughs> Frescas' hands. <laughs> Left it short. That's that size we talked about early on. And it's a fair point to reference. UNLV hasn't faced a team like Michigan, let's say, in terms of the length and size since what? Mid-December, it played at Oklahoma State. Well, and even Oklahoma State, they have some nice players. They have a lot of firepower off the bench. They shoot the three, but they don't have the size that uh, Michigan does. One player that plays significant minutes is, oh, is under six feet tall, and that is Nolan at 5'11". Also the last time the Lady Rebels lost. It's been three months. Young draws the contact, headed to the free throw. No, offensive foul. Oh, it's a charge whistle against Young, her second. It's so tough in a situation like this. I thought it was terrific help coming over. Oh, <laughs> look where those heels were. Well, it's just so tough to make that call. I thought it was a great move. Could have been, looked to me like the defense wasn't in proper defensive position, didn't get there like they needed to. That's a tough call against Young. Yeah, heels over the restricted arc. Tough break for the Lady Rebels. Both Brown and Young on the bench. That's a dire blow. Michigan with some size advantage. Drive inside, this is Elise Stuck, yes. Yeah, Lee Stuck comes off the bench, aggressive. I think that's really, really critical right now to match UNLV's aggressiveness. She played really, really well. Stuck did in the Big Ten tournament. All right, so one more look for the Lady Rebels. Five seconds. And they sh that's a turnover. That time, Kennedy Winfrey shuffled her feet. Ball back to the Wolverines with 3.6 left. That's five turnovers now in the first quarter. And I guarantee you, Michigan has a play set up for this exact situation. Got a lot of shooters on the floor, a lot of opportunities. My, my bet is with uh, Leah Brown, though, or Felia, who's so quick. Well, with two seconds, to the rim, scoops it up. Oh, yeah! 
using every inch and squeezing out every <laughs> fraction of the clock to get the highest percentage look. What a terrific last five minutes for Michigan. And so Michigan ends the quarter on a 12-2 run. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Michigan's 12-2 run here in the first quarter, led by Leah Brown. Man, she has been good, great energy. She gets to the rim. She has really read the defense in transition, so difficult to contain with her size. 6'1", this fifth-year senior, certainly with the experience, and a trademark jumper. I'm jealous. <laughs> right in rhythm. <laughs> Looking like yours for back yeah, in the right, day, right? No, I'm jealous. I, I, I didn't have a trademark jumper. Well, I had a trademark scoop shot. So you see, there's the six points for Leah Brown, just the nine for UNLV. Hey, look, UNLV won, has won 22 in a row. It's great. Would you, you guys won them all that year at Texas, though. I did. We're the first undefeated team in, <laughs> back in way back then. <laughs> 1986. Oh, how about Nolan? Yeah, Nolan. You know what? Nolan's the kind of player that she gains confidence if she knocks down her first couple of shots. She had that out of bounds play earlier, hit a two. Now she gets an open look for a three. You know, B, this is a difficult time. We're just five turnovers, only four made field goals. Yep. They need to handle this pressure, try to get some good looks. And look at the personnel on the floor. It doesn't feature their two bigs, Brown and Young. There's the other Brown, kept the pivot foot. Or did she? Williams with the left hand, that's a nice skilled move. So Cameron Williams, the junior from Chicago, has got four. And Michigan starting to really lengthen this lead. 17 to two run. Well, it's really been about their defense too. They have picked it up defensively. Now it's the six turnovers, a lot of deflections. Shot clock, draining, six seconds. Jackson improvises, and there you go, that'll help. Yeah, really nice job by Jackson off the bench. She does a really good job of finding ways to score. This is just a tough matchup, I think. UNLV with their size, it's so tough to see over the top of Michigan. There's Nolan, another nice find from Brown. Yeah, that's just a UCLA cut. That was an easy play right there. Need to defend that better. Don't give up those easy shots. Oh, back to your point, Leah Brown. I mean, that's your dominant ball handler, playmaker, 6'1". You've got a couple of guards north of six foot. That's really making things problematic for UNLV. Here's another trap. That time Booker able to fight away from it. Deflection, Michigan on the move again. Philia lost it, ball know, back to UNLV. I know I keep talking about size, but when you look at the fact that Michigan is trapping the ball, there is nobody on UNLV, UNLV's team that can handle the ball in the perimeter and see over the top of that trap. So they can't see the person that's left wide open in the corner. You know, I was just about to ask, how long do you keep those two on the bench? And Lindy LaRock is saying at this point, we got to get it back on the floor. That's Brown and Young, each playing with two fouls. Young trying to post up on Kaiser. Michigan got their hands on that one. Nice. UNLV does retain, but the hustle, the overwhelming pressure is really starting to mount. This is a Michigan team. What's the word that we keep hearing? Battle tested. When you compete in the Big Ten, you win 10 games like it did this year in a league that features four squads that are three seats or higher. Ready for anything. Booker, they need it? No. And rebound down to Stuck. Michigan by 13. Early second quarter. It's a kickball, stays here. Michigan prides themselves on being the hardest working team in America. I asked the coaching staff yesterday, so do you think, you know, you don't really know what other teams are doing. And I'm like, I, it, for, in my opinion, after seeing a lot of practices, they're definitely in the top five. Well, everything's so detail oriented. Yes. We have the high net ranking, went 11 and seven in Big Ten play. 
There's a turnover, so UNLV has it. Well, nice defense by Etheridge. She's got some great quickness defensively. And Michigan continues with this tough defense. They called out two here. Let's see if they're going to continue to trap. Tough for UNLV to venture inside the three-point line. This is Nolan, cuts off Booker, she frees herself up, missed it long, out of bounds. It's so tough for UNLV. They really are a team that is depends on the ball going through Young's hands. She gets touches on every single time down the floor. UNLV going to go to a three-quarter court press now, see if they can pick up a couple extra possessions. But just to finish that point, if Young's not touching the ball, you're not getting the same offense. Fortuitous balance, Booker on the run, into the paint, the fall away, down and out. Young with the offensive rebound came soaring in, goes up. That one just rolls out. It was halfway down. She's headed back to the free throw line. Yeah, and that's, I think, what Young needs to do. She needs to step up her physicality right now, be able to catch the ball in the flow of the offense to help her teammates out and be that facilitator and distributor, but also hit the offensive boards, get extra opportunities here. Her ability to finish around the rim is really, really good. She's got nice size, great hands. Right there, UNLV, you know, you're just trying to limit the times you're taking the ball out of the net. Maybe get out in transition. Young, 18 and 10, she averaged this year. Plus, she leads the team in steals per game. Two-time all-conference selection, the Vegas native, one of a few on the roster, and they all really have this overwhelming pride to play for their city. Nolan's three, hits back iron, rebound to Kaiser, one more chance, fires it up, she's fouled. And just no black bodies, no black jerseys on the, the white jerseys right there, boxing out. Too many opportunities for Michigan. And then Etheridge whistled for the foul. Michigan plus seven on the glass. So they've got the 17 to 10 rebounding advantage. Ophelia has three offensive rebounds. Kaiser has two. You expect Kaiser to be in there battling. Remember the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship first round continues today on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. So for more information on tournament games and networks, go to NCAA.com. Did you watch any last night or today? Oh my goodness. Well, we had a 15 over a two on the men's side. Goodbye, Arizona. How about the women's game Goodbye that went to, to my overtime well. today? Big win for, yeah, South, South Florida. South Florida over Marquette in overtime. That so, was exciting. So one day already in the books for the men. Women's tournament started today. And away we go. Nice three that time for Kennedy Winfrey. And that's something they certainly needed. Canyon, Texas native. Everybody knows West Texas got some great players that come out of high school there. Hey, that has to be a charge if it was a charge at the other end. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Celia gets whistled for it. Yeah, risky, risky right there for Young to try to take that charge with two fouls already in the game, but she had to. So UNLV is shrunken the gap to 10 after a string of recent turnovers by the Wolverines. Celia sits down but not before a conversation with her head coach. Well, you know, V right now has seven turnovers. They're shooting six for 20, only 30% in this first half. Just need to figure out a way to get on a roll. Etheridge fires it up, falls through. Etheridge has been really good here in the first half. You see her range, her ability to slice, now her three-pointer. Timely three-pointer, I would say. And a timely 7-1 run. Good ball movement, stuck, head fake. Back out to Brown, she wants it. This fires, here's Booker. 
A little sense of urgency now for the Rebels. Booker, the attack. Brown came soaring in, got her hands on the board, but instead, careens to Brown. There's the playmaker. Yeah, great post position that time for Kaiser. Missed it with the left hand. Etheridge cut off and peels back out. Alyssa Brown tried to squeeze it through the window. Instead, it deflects out. So UNLV inbounds when we return. Michigan by seven in Baton Rouge. Coming up at halftime degree in the studio with Monica McNutt, Nikki Fargus, and myself, Kelsey Riggs. We're going to talk about South Carolina, number one overall seed, taking care of business. Plus, we've got an overtime thriller, but right now, Michigan taking care of business. They've gotten a little cold lately, though, Monica. Yeah, they have, and partly because of the pressure that UNLV has managed to find. But they've got their three-headed monster. They've got three players that are averaging 15 points or better. I expect them to keep the gas going. And Desiree Young got in foul trouble for UNLV with two fouls, but she's got to come back and have a big second quarter. That and a little bit more coming your way at the half. We'll see you guys in just a couple minutes. All right, thanks. We'll talk to you in a bit. 4-13 and make it 4 7 to go in this first half. Etheridge with the basketball for UNLV. Shot clock was winding and that's a violation. Again, Michigan's, Michigan's got that pressure defense. UNLV had a nice 6 0 run. So Lindy LaRotte's team is trying to surge back into this one. The family is growing, by the way. There is uh, Lindy's husband, Dan, and there is the young one, the newborn, who's what, just a, a five months old now. Born in November, we should know. Yeah. Yeah, Coach LaRock actually, her water broke during one of the exhibition games, I think on November 4th. And she sort of waved to her mom like, and it was in the second half, she's like, Mom, come down here. Had to go to the hospital, left the team uh, for the second half, had the baby the next day. So in November, has the whole family here. Sister, niece, parents. Her dad was a longtime coach as well, LaRock's uh, dad in Las Vegas and with the AAU system. I don't know if Roman Owen expected that was the manner in which uh, he was going to be upgraded to acting head coach that evening. <laughs> but great family. Yeah, you, you just alluded to it. Basketball family through and through. Lindy and her sister were coached by their dad in high school. Both went on to play collegiately. Lindy, of course, at Stanford. Her sister went on and played at Oklahoma. Well, you see so much of Stanford when you look at the offenses that UNLV runs. A lot of the philosophy, offensive foul right there by yeah. Michigan and a turnover. Yeah, that's not stuck. Oh, good job, job by UNLV. Again, they're switching with their man to their zone. They're doing a nice job of just getting extra opportunities for themselves here. Michigan, right, they had a 14-point lead. And, and Andrea, since that point, UNLV's gone on a... 7-1 run. Well, you know, he's got that smaller lineup out there right now. And again, a tip by the bigger Michigan guards. This is Brown in transition again. Wild layup. Here comes UNLV back the other way. Booker got one defender in the air. Brooker will keep the ball in her hands, but you see that size right there. Good job by uh, by Brown on the inside. Yes, yeah, stuck. Turned away the first attempt. That's Brown's first basket. The sophomore from Tucson. So now it's an eight nothing run, five point game. Kaiser looking for a cutter. Brown, brilliant stuff. She draws the foul. Gets up, heads to the free throw line. I'll just look again like a 2-3 zone or, or a little bit of a lapse defensively. Brown does a nice job of slashing behind her defender, finding that open gap right there. Her IQ is just so good out there on the floor. Great job by uh, Coach Arico to play her at the point guard position. She hadn't played there before, moved from the wing to the point guard position. They needed her this season to do that and has handled it spectacularly. 
Danielle Roush, Amy Dilk, and recent years they move on. And yeah, out of necessity, she basically had to take over, be the primary ball handler in the past. She was more of a off ball two guard, sometimes played the wing. Well, and you can move her around out there a little bit, so she's an exclusively playing point guard for you all the time. Good hustle by UNLV. It looks like Michigan will have this possession, though. And you see this UNLV team seemingly unafraid when they have a give up a lead or or there's a lead by the other team. They've been down several times this year by about 10 points and been able to come back and win games. So it doesn't fluster them at all. Again, they were down 13 earlier. Back in this one. Michigan, Andrew, without a basket, a field goal that is in more than six minutes. Kaiser's wide open, though. Brown the board. Booker, cross-court feed, Jackson. Double, trying to get it back out, throws it away into heavy traffic. Coming up on the 130 mark in the first half. Good passing, Kaiser, yes. That was tremendous teamwork and ball movement for Michigan. They are really good when they share the basketball, probably at their best when they share the basketball. Here's Booker inside. One not and a, done. Yeah, not a bad look for Booker. Again, she is always a scoring threat. You cannot let your guard down at all on Booker. She's got five today. Had all those in the first quarter. Well, she's taken 11 shots to get those five points. So two for 11 from the field. Inside of a minute. Michigan has four to shoot. Brown launches, left the three short, and Brown with another rebound. So Alyssa Brown has done nice work on the glass today. That's her fifth rebound. UNLV once down as many as 13. Back within eight. Half a minute to go till half. Ten on the shot clock. Booker could use one inside. Another deflection. That time Stuck has done some excellent work on the defensive end in this first half. Well, will Michigan's, force the yeah, Lady Rebels to inbound. They, they just do a great job with their hands, deflections, scrambling when they're out of position defensively. Five seconds on the shot clock here for UNLV. They get Young back in the game with those two fouls. Boy, she and Brown, they've, been, they've managed the second quarter nicely. Picked up two fouls in the first, both of them quick. That three from Etheridge, uh, Etheridge parted long, out of bounds, and so Michigan has one more look with 14.7 to go. And UNLV, UNLV will come with that three-quarter court pressure. Ten seconds. Ball's into Brown's hands. Find Stuck underneath. One second, got to get it up. This is Nolan. Might have been after the horn anyway. And Michigan takes an eight point lead into halftime. The Wolverines led by as many as 13. The Lady Rebels came back and sliced into the deficit, but Leah Brown, shot making was nice at this first. Let's go to the studio with Kelsey, Monica, and Nikki. Guys, thanks so much. Welcome to Degree in the Studio. Michigan with the 28 to 20 lead. They have won five straight first round games alongside Monica McNutt and Nikki Fargus. I'm Kelsey Riggs. Great to be with you. Let's get you caught up on what is happening all across the ESPN network. So starting with the number one overall seed in all the land, South Carolina taking on Norfolk State. We take you to the start of the second quarter and they have so many weapons in the paint. Camila Cardosa is definitely one of them, but then they also have somebody like Zaya Cook that can do things like that. Well, they're going to have to obviously generate some offense through their defense. They're not shooting a great percentage right now, only shooting 33% from the field. South Carolina up 54 to 20. Yes, you are watching the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Welcome back to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yeah, Mike the Tiger is hanging out. This squad plays in a 
about an hour, so he's getting restless waiting for <laughs> LSU's tip off uh, back inside the Pete Maravich Center. Glad you are here with Andrea Lloyd, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. So Michigan has the eight point lead. It was once a 13 point advantage. UNLV tightened things up. However, we saw a lot of good things from Leah Brown. And she really got the scoring started early in this game for the Wolverines. Yeah, a pretty slow start for these two teams tied at seven to seven. Leah Brown decided that she was gonna make some things happen and did a really good job of just reading defenses. Uh, went back door against this zone, got an easy layup. And then she really did a nice job in transition as well. So back to back baskets for her. Uh, six points in this first quarter, which got uh, Michigan back into it. So UNLV again, we mentioned how it's won 22 in a row. They're very efficient efficient offense. They don't normally make mistakes. They've given it away 11 times. That's almost at their season average. Michigan's defense was overwhelming at times. Yeah, at first, first quarter, Michigan had one steal. Second quarter, four steals. And it was all about double teaming. Mich Michigan came out, I thought, and did a nice job of really creating opportunities for themselves and putting UNLV in a bad situation because Michigan has got that size advantage. This is a great play where they had tipped the ball, tipped the ball. Everybody touches the ball on this play. Gets down the floor, sharing the basketball. As we were told, a master class and how to share the basketball with a finish. Credit our man Paul Irvin for that one. Yeah, I think everybody touched the basketball on that sequence right there. A great illustration of what Michigan has done. It shot 39% from the floor in that first half, but uh, their primary chunk of their offense is coming on the heels of UNLV giveaways. Well, both of these teams could shoot the ball better. See if they've settled down here in the second half. Yeah, there is Essence Booker. Can she get going early in this second for the Lady Rebels? Oh, I mentioned she's a relentless scorer. She just hasn't had a lot of luck with her shot. The UNLV almost with a steal and a steal. Yeah, there it is. Yep. I will tell you this, that uh, Lindy LaRock is masterful at her halftime adjustments. You know, if there's one thing that she can really bring to this team, it's her Stanford experience as a player, as an assistant coach. And you see that happen on the floor. She makes a lot of adjustments at timeouts, at halftimes. Oh, great backdoor cut. Etheridge puts it up and in. Yeah, and LaRock excited over on the sideline. I can bet that was a drawn up play. Wild pass. That one is lucky to remain with Michigan. So it's back to a four-point game. Round of 64 in Baton Rouge. Nolan buries it. He's got Nolan's, a great looking stroke from deep. You know what, Nolan is just so solid out there. And we talked about her confidence level if she hits her first shot. That, she's had a couple of threes here today. Top 10 in the league. She makes about two threes a game. Michigan has reached its fifth straight women's championship. It's advanced in all the prior four. Booker again on the pull up that time. Did you see that craftiness right there? Booker splitting the defense, putting the ball out in front of her and then going and getting it. Is that it was pretty sweet. It just felt like it was only a matter of time before some of those shots were going to start falling. But she has not been deterred. Now, in this second half, she's made her first two. Well, New LV has to handle that double team better. Doing a nice job right now, sharing the basketball. Back to a three-point game. That's what we're accustomed to seeing from UNLV. Young and Brown playing well together. The four and five player, the forwards, they share the basketball well. Young pretty quiet in that first quarter with those two fouls. Brown ball fake from 15, got it, she's nicely just, done. She's cool as a cucumber out there, just kind of catches, takes that one dribble, finds that mid-range shot of hers. 130th game. She is comfortable on the floor. Young's look from inside rolls out. Brown on the move again, surveying. Starts to initiate some stuff. Got two posts <laughs> that are posting underneath. That time, Kaiser gets fouled. Starts to initiate some stuff. I like that technical description right there, some stuff. <laughs> well, just throw it to your big who's well, yeah. got some real estate down low. <laughs> well, how about this stat? So uh, Michigan finishes the half going one for 10 from the field, and they've hit their first two field goals and are at the free throw line right now. So definitely improving on their offensive end here to start the second half. 
Kaiser, one of the veterans. She's also a fifth-year senior. All five years in Ann Arbor. For a second, she put her name. in for yeah. Nas Hillman, in a sense. This yeah, year. well, she put her name in the transfer portal for a quick second. I think she thought she wanted to go somewhere else and maybe have a different opportunity, and she realized her heart was with Michigan. Wolverines in a hurry again. Kaiser, left hand dribble, bumping into Young with the right hand. And the, the elbow, too. I like the way she used her elbow to get a little space cleared for her. Might have been a bit of a foul, but hey, nothing I wouldn't have done. <laughs> I'm going to call you for a cylinder foul over here with that one. <laughs> I would be fouled out of games if you were doing that. <laughs> Brown wants three. Uh -huh. Got it. Absolutely. Look at that young lady right there. Plays inside, outside. A great compliment to Young. Brown, no look to Kaiser. And she just turned around and walked the other way before the shot was even taken. Brown, so, so, such a great player as far as making passes, heady player, smart. She averages six assists per game this year. After the miss, stuck, tied up with Brown. Possession arrow favors the Wolverines. Yeah, stuck being really, really physical out there on the interior. Does a nice job right there of contesting the shot, getting, the, getting an opportunity for a team. Yeah, Kim barnes Rico certainly has a number of veterans at her disposal this year. Well, and you look at, at Brown and Nolan, who are seniors, and Kaiser, you have three solid players out there that have been through the wars, played a lot of different roles over the years as well. Right. There it is, there's the five seniors. That one on the baseline goes through. There's Brown once again. So Brown with 11, three different Wolverines in double figures. Travel. Young, yeah, she didn't put the ball down, it's a travel. Just keep your eye on Aaliyah Brown over there, 32 in white for Michigan as she has been nursing that sore foot for, of hers for a while and she looks like she's limping out there to me. Just want to make sure that she's healthy and able to go 100 percent yeah she was limited in practice like, yesterday no one knocks like it, it down brown's like it doesn't affect my passing skills at all my arms are fine <laughs> that's another assist i got her at five today <laughs> and nolan leading all scores with 13. timeout unlv michigan on a seven nothing run Well, Brown with a terrific pass, and she's got five assists. Got those dimes going on. It's on the heels of a 7-0 Michigan run. UNLV head coach Lindy LaRock not pleased from the latest effort from her team. For Michigan, they came out and they were six for eight from the field, five of those assisted. She needs her team, Lindy LaRock, to step it up right now defensively and get some stops on defense and continue to play like they did in that first few minutes of the second half offensively. That's a timeout right there where you're coaching Hart, not a lot of X's and O's. Right. Where they're five of eight from the floor this quarter. But yet, Michigan a little hotter, so they remain down at 12. Here's another quick whistle, so we step aside once more. A timeout in Baton Rouge. Back in Baton Rouge, Michigan with a 12-point lead. Midway through the third, so our first game of two. Round of 64 action here inside the Pete Maravich Center. So coming up on ESPN2, 5.30, LSU plays its first game. Kim Mulkey's team faces Hawaii, the 3-14 matchup in our section.
of the Greenville number two regional. And LSU. yeah, Hawaii has just entered the building. Yeah, by the way. they have a tall task today against LSU. Boy, has that been the best show in Baton Rouge this year for women's basketball? The talk of the nation LSU has been. Well, I think it's the hottest ticket right in town, no doubt about it. That's a foul on Kyra Evans, the freshman's first. That's oh, a 28-2 LSU team. They started 23-0. And yeah, what's key right now for speaking of another team that won a whole bunch of games consecutively, UNLV. They're 31 and 2, but down 12. After getting off to a fine start here in the third, what's critical now moving forward? Well, I think offense and LSU's in the house. They know a little yeah, thing or two about offense and got to put the ball in the basket right now. You got to cut into this lead. I think Young is a big part of this. She needs to get touches in many different ways. And as well, UNLV needs to stay out of trap situations. Don't turn the basketball over and defend. Am I, is there a whole laundry list of things they need to do here? <laughs> I think I got it all. <laughs> Stuck, caught underneath, Young all over her. This one's on the ground. Kaiser snatches it, bounces it up. Offensive rebound. One more chance. Kaiser spins, lost it. Here come the Lady Rebels. Ooh, that's an offensive foul. <laughs> and there's a little shove that was on Stuck. So Young draws her second. Yeah, and Stuck just pushed the offensive player out of the way, trying to get her off of the block right there. Yeah, she knows it. Just the second team foul on Michigan. Oh, going back to your point on Young, she's just one of six from the floor, so it's been difficult to get her the normal amount of looks and shots she gets on a nightly basis. It's so important for her to get touches because she's also a facilitator. She distributes the ball. She's a great assister. Right now, she's been just limited without getting a whole lot of uh, touches. Had to go get her own touches sometimes on the offensive boards. Ophelia clears it on the glass and then takes it up herself. Just beats the 10 second timer. Those long steps right to the bucket again. Yeah, I'm not sure Ophelia even understands how good she is. Running the point guard right now, possibly just giving Brown a little bit of a, a rest. Nice backdoor cut. Etheridge had it knocked away and it falls into Brown's hands. So UNLV struggling after making its first four in the quarter. Kaiser, four to three. <laughs> I love the fact that Kaiser can go inside and outside. And again, another assist for Leah Brown. Just walking back after she makes that pass. Total confidence in her teammates. It's a 12-0 Wolverines run. On well, for Michigan, really. They've just done a nice job in this second half of adjusting, knocking down shots. A lot of it comes from Brown, who's got such terrific vision over the top. They've been playing pretty much a quarter court game, which if you remember in the pregame that we listened to, you know, Coach LaRock wanted to have UNLV in a quarter court game. They're like, we don't want them to run. But what's right. happening right now is Michigan's knocking down the shots. So whether it's Nolan on the perimeter, Brown with that mid-range game, or Kaiser, who's just been so great in her fifth year at Michigan. They've been on a roll. You know, and, and they're, they're so balanced. It's just a great illustration of the balance. Now, you have the three that we highlighted right at the top of the show, Brown, Kaiser, and Ophelia. But today, it's a player like Maddie Nolan who has sprung for 13 points. And Nolan's such a terrific story. Uh, she is on the bench right now, but she has just been a tremendous player for Michigan over the last four seasons. And never thought she thought she might not ever play again when she was coming out of high school. How about Michigan? Eight of 12 oh, from yeah. the floor in this quarter. Yeah, and three of three from three. Now a 12 nothing run that the Lady Rebels have to try to put an end to. Arazo Frescas trying to bounce it down to Young, a kickball, and so UNLV keeps it. The Wolverines are just so active defensively. It seems like they are covering gaps. They're working hard. 
Uh, it has just not been easy for UNLV today. And this is normally a very smooth operation, especially offensively. Looks like maybe a little bit of blood on Kaiser's elbow right there. Yes, like indeed. Little tape. Little tape job. Just a little quick fix. Foul inside before the pass. That's on Kaiser. Booker in the corner connects. Yeah, Booker isn't a terrific three-point shooter, but she can certainly knock it down. She's better on the drive. That was a huge basket for UNLV. She's the only Lady Rebel in double figures. She's got 12, and so UNLV has its first points in four and a half minutes. However, though, there is a foul. Another one whistled against Desiree Young. Hey, if you're going to foul, get your money's worth, right? So the post game right Body now, wise, exactly, floor. both ends of the floor. It's just gotten really, really physical. Seems like both uh, coaches have talked about don't let your player get to the block in established position. So doing everything they can to keep those post players off the block. That pass was tipped. Booker. Yeah, deflected at that time off of Felia, so UNLV takes it. And just down low, it has been so physical. If you look at the block play, getting around in the post. <laughs> Might have been a little bit of uh, Oscar awarded, but... A message sent there as well. Yeah. Another three in the air, Fres uh, Durazo Frescas has been a little sluggish from deep that's the third foul on brown underneath so three on Alyssa brown and oh. desiree young they, careful because it looks like they may have yep just making sure we have the person who was awarded that foul correctly oh wow so an offensive foul yeah, has been called yeah against michigan yeah like Williams was going to the uh, boards and just got pushed. And then another whistle. latest on stuck so that's her fourth foul and so now that's going to send UNLV to the free throw line for a pair well this is good that UNLV can score with the clock stopped the NCAA women's championship continues today with first round games and rolls all the way through Sunday April 2nd that's the championship game in Dallas where we will crown, uh, crown our champion every game on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, go to NCAA.com. All right, back to a 12-point game. Less than 90 seconds to go. Kaiser, close range catch. So she's headed back to the free throw line. Yeah, the Lady Rebels running that three-quarter court press. They just aren't getting back and finding people quick enough. Another good look inside for Kaiser, who just, just kind of stays in there and battles for 40 minutes. Well, so she plays 35 minutes a game. And rarely does she leave the floor. She's got the 14 and eight today. And you've talked about her distributing abilities exactly, the five assists as well. So she and Leah Brown They'll find the open player. Three steals as well. So on the receiving end of some of those traps, able to go snatch the ball out of the air. It's been a fine quarter for Kaiser. Ten of those 16 here in the third. Durazo Frescas knocks it down from three. Yeah, Frescas is almost like those two free throws took the lid off the basket for her. That was a long range shot. Brown, assertive drive once again. And a foul underneath. 
Lindy LaRock does not agree. Yeah, that was a really, really late whistle right there. And we don't have a great angle on that from our position over here. So look like terrific G defense. And when you're trying to gain momentum, right, you're coming off that free throw and then a, a big three by Gerazzo Frescas. That's a big call. All right, let's take a peek. And I just think it, it's because Durazo Frescas was turned sideways a little bit and so established a defensive position originally and just didn't keep in front of the player that was attacking. So Michigan just keeps UNLV at arm's length away. Yeah, Lindy LaRock right here is saying if you you called the block on that end of the floor, why not here? So after the deflection, it stays with the Lady Rebels. Well, and you can see that the coaches understand the urgency of this moment. There's 51 seconds left in this quarter, and then one more quarter of play uh, for the season for one of these two teams. Winner advances to face LSU or Hawaii. That's our next game coming up inside of a minute. This is Young, aggressive drive, spins it in. Desi Ray Young, again, it has been an arduous uh, day for her inside, dealing with these Michigan bigs. Five points, five boards. A junior, she's an upperclassman. She understands that right now she needs to play. You know, Michigan stretched this to a 17-point lead lot, not long ago. But here is UNLV, maybe can get it back to single digits. Oh, a collision and a hard fall. The rejection, Young got tangled and winds up crashing into the sign behind the backboard. That was a pretty good block right there, but I believe there was also a foul called on the play. If I looked at the officials correctly, they will review this. And we'll have a chance with the push to talk to hear what their final decision is. Just great anticipation really right here by Young and her speed and all ball right there. Hard There's fall. There's a personal foul on white number 10. The previous play is under review for a possible upgrade. And really what they're looking to see is, is, is this unnecessary? Right. Uh, should they in, in, in upgrade it to an intentional foul of some sort? So you're looking at unnecessary hard contact. It looked like a clean block with a potentially a little bit of a foul right there, but it didn't look like something to upgrade to me. Right. It's just two athletes going at it right here. Yeah, a little bit of body there. You see the body on the shoulder. So certainly uh, the defense wasn't in the correct position in front of the offensive player. So that little bit of contact is where the original foul came, comes from. Well, first off, it's great to see Young. Well, she is up. She's standing with her teammates. It was a hard spill right here. Well, she went clear into the cameraman and the first row of seats over there. And tough cookie right there, Young is. Yeah, no doubt. So let's, we haven't talked so, about this yet. This is the amazing thing about Desi Ray Young. She had one scholarship offer out of high school. She was looked at by one other school, got a letter, but they never followed up. And so only UNLV recruited Desiree Young. Is that unbelievable? And now a two-time all-conference selection yeah. on the heels of that. Conference player of the year last season. All Could right, so have been this year, but went to someone else. Roy Golbayan is over, standing on the UNLV side, delivering the verdict here. He, Teresa Turner, Demoya Pugh have litigated this situation. Again, 10.7 left in this third quarter. It's After review, moment. the uncle ruling of a common foul stands. Two free throws. The free throws will be shot by the substitute. Yes, so, so wow, so Young comes out and it will be Etheridge. So the foul remains, of course, on Jordan Ho uh, Hobbs, her first. So here's Etheridge, a 67% free throw shooter. With a couple of big ones right here to steal some momentum back before the fourth quarter. 
Well, and I'm imagining we're going to see Young come back into the game here as quick as possible, if, if possible. But time has, I believe time has to run off the clock. I say that, and I, it's possible it doesn't. Etheridge now into double figures with 10. So UNLV, after falling behind by 17, has gone on an 11-4 run. It's a nine-point game. Six seconds. Feely has got it. Left-hand dribble with the left hand. Banks it in. Boy, she's beaten the clock a couple of times today. Skilled drive. And the floater is good. Michigan's lead is 11 now. Heading to the fourth quarter. Who's going to advance? Fourth quarter is coming up. Philia did it once in the first. Let's do it again off the window in the horn. Michigan had an eight-point lead at the half, though. Andrew, they have stretched that lead on the heels of a 26-point third quarter. Yeah, first half, very slow for both teams offensively, but this third quarter for Michigan, they got it going. Brown, Nolan, Kaiser from inside, Kaiser from outside. Just a tremendous job offensively of knocking down shots. They go 9 of 13 from the floor in that quarter. They hit all three from deep. You know, and, and Kaiser had half of those assists. That's the five up on the floor. Brown does not lack zeal and passion, does she? She does not. She has a lot of confidence out there. Personality on the floor, presence on the floor, which you love. I mean, those are your two fifth-year seniors that have gotten it done today. Brown and Kaiser have led the way. UNLV, boy, they, they are trying to claw their way back and climb back any way necessary. Nolan, she has been red hot from three. You mentioned Brown and Kaiser. I was going to add to that. Nolan, she has been spectacular in this game. Filled her role. She's the shooter. She's the go-to player when they need a three. Look at that, four or five from yep. deep. Good answer. It's Kiara Jackson, the sophomore from Texas. Mount West Conference sixth player of the year. She certainly brings athleticism and a good three-point shot in when she comes. This is where you need to see the urgency from UNLV. Nine minutes to go. Maybe it's someone's season. Who's it going to be? There's a foul after the miss, and that's on Cameron Williams. A good job by Young of boxing out right there. Let's see what UNLV can do with this possession. Uh, they actually matched... Uh, Michigan in that quarter as far as scoring to a certain extent so UNLV 23 Michigan 26 what they need to do is shut Michigan down and then continue to score Boy, you scored 23 in the quarter on the heels of scoring 20 in the first half you think we might be in a better position you find yourself down further feel ya. nope rebound to young Second straight women's championship appearance for UNLV. They hadn't gone in 20 years before making it last year. Brown can't hit. And it's Leah Brown with another board. Look at Brown with her eyes up. She always is surveying the court, can see over the top of the defense. Williams working over the left, uh, over the right shoulder, and with the left, she flexes up and in. Yeah, she has done a nice job. She's the one that actually has had to fill in for Nas Hillman after that graduation, and really that, got that big body inside. Does a nice job around the rim. Michigan's lead is 13. Winner to the round of 32 on Sunday. Booker, <laughs> acrobatic finish. She is so creative with the basketball and so good on the move. Got to play defense, though, if you're UNLV and you want to get back in this. Now it's Nolan at the rim. I think if this is going to be a track meet, Michigan likes this. Yep. They want to run. And while UNLV is a team that likes to run as well, this pace favors Michigan. This is Brown, a big one. Her three is strong. 
Pinballs out stays with UNLV. Yeah, seven minutes to go, and you can't be trading baskets Absolutely. now moving forward. Got to get defensive stops if you're UNLV. But you look at the fact that UNLV scores about 73 points a game on the season, and they've been held to 48 thus far. Terrific job by Michigan, especially with that trap uh, in the second quarter. I thought they created a lot of opportunities for themselves. Booker stepped out of bounds. Turnover. Just another empty possession for UNLV. Here's where Michigan can use a little bit of clock. They're in the quarter court situation. Allow the clock to run down a bit. Let everybody touch the ball. Williams with the left hand again. Second chance foul. Went and tracked down her own miss. Brown whistled for her fourth. Cameron Williams at the line coming up. And that's just a nicely run play, I think. Again, using shot clock. You get the ball in the hands of your passer with a vision in Brown. She uses that 6-1 frame, able to get it inside. So now Michigan 8 of 11 from the free throw line. Williams, the junior from Chicago, best year of her career, right? Well, what's interesting is she was a five-star recruit, and she really yeah. wanted to come to Michigan and be challenged and play against Nas Hillman every day in practice. So she continues to improve. Her offense is pretty good around the rim, and finisher still needs is, is been challenged to improve her defense. Yeah, and that was a question heading into this season for Michigan on the heels of one of its finest seasons in program history. You can argue the best. They reached the Elite Eight of the Women's Championship, their deepest run ever. And so Nas Hillman, arguably the best player in program history, gets drafted 15th overall in the WNBA draft. So the expectations were a little murky, you could say, when you lose a player of that caliber. I think there's no question the expectation was Michigan, a top half team in the league, but just how good would they be? And they turned in just another fine season back in the tournament. And it's been players like Williams, like Felia, that have evolved and stepped up when they had well, to this well, year. Well, like Kaiser, too. I mean, yeah. last year she stepped up as well, but Kaiser, who's defending right now against Young with that terrific move, I mean, she's somebody that played 91 minutes as a freshman. She is the epitome of a throwback athlete that stays for four years, in this case five years, because an extra COVID year has put the work in and it has been rocky the first three years, but had two tremendous years with the Wolverines. Well, we've seen just a variety of examples of that development during Kim Barnes Arico's tenure as the head coach. There's a foul inside with 5'11 to go. I also like and how credit her whole staff as well. It, 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 absolutely, and not only just with development of players, but then just the the ability to move players around. So you take a Brown who played on the wing, and now you're moving to her, her to a point, but she's not exclusively a point. In every single play, in the last three plays down, she's brought the ball down, given it to somebody else, and then moved to the wing position where she can be the passer. She's the one that sees sees the floor really well. Decision making goes into her hands. Brown has to take a seat after picking up her fourth foul. And she's trying to convince everybody she should be shooting right now, well, I believe. Were, were our officials <laughs> making sure they had the right player? So two at the line now for Brown. She is, she is the engine, in a sense, for this team. In terms of her poise, the presence. She's that player that has nine assists. Just remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Almost a double-double. Or, not, uh, let's see, yeah. Uh, Double check those numbers real quick. So seven assists and 15, re or 15 points today. Booker with the latest basket for the Lady Rebels. Winners of 22 in a row. They need quite a remarkable turnaround in the final five minutes if they want to stretch the win streak into the round of 32. Nolan off the screen, Kaiser passes up the three. Shot clock draining, 10 seconds. Brown turns. Nope. And she had the certainly the length and the reach advantage over Booker. 
Gets into the paint. No look to Young. Beautiful. 11-point game. Yeah, got to apply some pressure here. Play good defense for UNLV. Again, can't trade baskets. Eight points for Young in the second half. Just letting that shot clock run down. Here's Brown. Oh yeah, there's your and a little roll reversal to find the cutting point guard to the basket. There's oh. another assist. Yeah, sixth assist for Kaiser on the on the day, and that's the versatility of Brown. Put her on the block if you need to. Let her go to work. Time winding down for UNLV. Michigan right now at the 13-point lead, certainly in position. Well, certainly to in advance control. advance the next round, yeah. Yeah, control definitely. They've slowed the pace down. They look confident, kind of in Kaiser their flow. Again. Yeah, how would you describe just this second half overall for the Wolverines? Oh, just tremendous third quarter, I think, and the pace has helped them. They've, uh, Michigan has slowed it down here as of late to use the clock, but they've pretty much gotten anything they wanted at the offensive end. Just kind of going through their array of plays right now. Nolan, another. Felia rips it away. And so Michigan can drain a bit more time. 2.45 to go. And there's the touch foul. So that's the third team foul on UNLV. Michigan in position, 2.43 away from advancing to the round of 32. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Let's take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance for the Wolverines. Maddie Nolan hit. Let's go. We can count them up. How many? One, two, three, four threes today. Yeah, and her nickname is Maddie Nylon from her freshman year after she hit a nothing but net three and it's stuck all the time. And we wonder why. Look at her shooting from all over the floor. She is tremendous today. 18 points on the game and really a catalyst for the offense. Yeah, she's got 18, so one of three Wolverines that have scored 17 or more. Kaiser's got 18. Leah Brown's got 17. You can see 11 for Nolan after halftime. Do you have a nickname? She's got Maddie Nylon. Which, <laughs> what, which what you got? I, yeah, I, I think I lacked in that area. You know, it was always just the short and last name. It was just Fitz. That was, that was always like a very Fitz. convenient one. I really needed to do something more notable than just yeah. show up. Yeah. <laughs> then I might have gotten a more creative one. This is Brown for three. And so now Lindy LaRock is going to wisely take the timeout. So it's a 12-point game. 2.18 to go. UNLV has one left. Well, we got good news, folks, because the Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi <laughs> show is back. They're headed to Dallas. <laughs> I think it depends on who you ask. I love the quote from Gino Ariema when he talks it. about the Bird and Taurasi show. And he's like, I don't know. I heard enough of them. I don't know if I need to hear any more. Bringing insight experience. Forget about that. How about the witty and witty humor. is the humor and the banter? Yeah. Hashtag Bird Taurasi. <laughs> and the show returns to the Final Four again. It's March 31st, Sunday, April 2nd. That is the day the championship live on ESPN2 and it's, ESPN+. It's, Plus. If luck is in our great, favor, maybe yeah. South Carolina advances to that it's point again. It's actually a great or, show. I don't want to diss Bird and Tarazi. They're tremendous together. Have a great friendship, long friendship. Good. They're fun. I would say pretty riveting television a year ago. <laughs> well, if you don't want to watch the game or listen to the announcers... <laughs> Two oh five to go. Michigan trying to advance in this tournament for a fifth straight year. Felia draining some clock. This is Camp Schrader for three. Oh, Felia coming from the top of the key to go track that one down. Draws the foul. 
well. Yeah, six offensive rebounds for Felia today. She's been really, really good. 11 total rebounds, just six points. A couple of buzzer beaters for the shot clock, and she's been really, really active. You like to see that with a young player, a sophomore, just a sophomore. She had that injury that kept her out uh, all of February. She missed seven games, so really looks like she's back in the flow of things and active. The activity level always at a high, and there it is. You just mentioned it. Look at the brace on the left knee. She missed all seven games in February with that knee injury. Comes back certainly with quite a lot to prove. And she did some fine work. So we highlighted the scores, but she has been integral in Michigan's success today. So at 90 seconds to go, the Wolverines are in position. They will await the winner. Most likely of our game coming up next. And that is the third seed LSU Tigers. That's the home team here in this section of the bracket. And Hawaii. So, that, so Kim Barnes Rico, she just keeps raising the bar. Booker offline on the three. Young, one dribble, yes. She keeps raising the bar. So I mentioned this is their record fifth straight NCAA uh, Women's Championship. The sixth that she has led this program to in her 11 years as head coach. So six out of 11, that's not a bad rate, rate right? And, I think the really interesting thing about uh, Kim Barnes Arico is just the fact that she's not trying to build a good team. She's trying to build a program, and yeah. she talks about that all the time. And it's one of the big reasons she really invests so much in her players. A terrific role model, terrific person to have your your student athlete to uh, spend a lot of time around. She is really, really upbeat, a terrific leader. And I think they like kind of the idea of being in a different role this year. This is a team that last season went to the Elite Eight, uh, lost in the Elite Eight, and... It was the deepest run ever yeah, in program history. But lower expectations this year, and, and I feel like uh, Coach Rico's team really feels like they can be not necessarily a Cinderella team, but a team that maybe gets an upset and surprises some people. Well, look at that, by the way, at the bottom. The 39 prior years of the program's history, they went to five championships. And KBA has led them to <laughs> six in her 11. Look, they win 20 games every year. They're always competitive. Some top three finishes in the Big Ten. You know, there wasn't that rich of a history of just major success for this program. One of the and she's turned it around. Yeah, one of the things I find interesting about Michigan is just their cohesiveness, how much they're willing to work, not just on the court, but off the court watching film. And little things like this. Every single player on the team wears the same shoes. Now in a day where everybody wants to be different and wear stylish shoes, this is a throwback team and everybody yeah. wears the same shoes. Let's see yeah, the seniors. About, yeah, the appreciation here for Booker. You know, and Booker, a senior, but a Vegas native as well. And this has been a very memorable, emotional season for UNLV, one of the best in program history. And I don't think this program is going anywhere. I, I think it has been made very evident in order to win the Mountain West Conference, you got to go through UNLV. You got to go through Vegas. Well, in three seasons, Lindy Larock was 72 and 18 coming into this game. So just 19 wow. losses in three years. So she has this program on the right track. And they came in here. They should have their hold their heads high. Tough matchup with Michigan today, who's got some experience and size. They played their hearts out. Michigan, business as usual, moving on again. A 71-59 final in Baton Rouge. And so, yes, it's five straight tournaments for this program. They advance. They win a game in now five in a row. And topple a 31-win UNLV team that had won 22 in a row.